live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's special Big Data NYC coverage of theCUBE here in Manhattan in New York City. We're in Hell's Kitchen. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jim Kobilis, who's with Wikibon Analyst for Big Data. In conjunction with Strata Data going on right around the corner, this is our annual event where we break down the big data, the AI, the cloud, all the goodness of what's going on in big data. Our next guest is Tendu Yugurtu, who's the Chief Technology Officer at SingSort. Great to see you again, CUBE alumni. I've been on multiple times. Always great to have you on, get the perspective, the CTO perspective, uh, and the SingSort update, so good to see you. Good seeing you, John and Jim. Uh, it's a pleasure being here too. Again, the pulse of big data <laughs> is uh, in New York, and. Uh, it's a, a great week uh, with a lot of uh, happening. I always borrow the quote from Pat Gelsinger, who's the CEO of VMware, who said on theCUBE in I think 2011, before he joined VMware as CEO at EMC, he said, if you're not out in front of that next wave, yeah. you're driftwood. And the key to being successful is to ride the waves. And uh, the big waves are coming in now with AI. Certainly big data has been rising tide floats all boat, but now the, 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 the aperture, the scale of data is larger. SyncSort has been riding the wave with us. We've been having you guys on multiple times. And you know, we talked about the importance of the mainframe in the early days, but now SyncSort just keeps on adding more and more capabilities and you're riding the wave, the big wave, the, the big data wave. What's the update now with you guys where are you guys now in context of today's emerging data landscape? Absolutely, uh, as organizations progress with their modern data architectures and uh, building the next generation analytics platforms, leveraging uh, machine learning, leveraging uh, 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 cloud elasticity, we have observed that uh, data quality and data governance have uh, become more critical than ever. A uh, couple of years, we have been seeing this trend. I would like to create the data lake, data as a service, and uh, enable bigger insights from the data. And uh, this year, really, every enterprise is trying to have that trusted data set created. Mm -hmm. Because uh, data lakes are turning into data swamps, as uh, Dave Valente refers <laughs> often. Uh, and uh, uh, collection of these diverse uh, data sets, whether it's mainframe, whether it's uh, messaging queues, uh, whether it's a relational data warehouse environments, is uh, challenging uh, the customers. And we can take one simple use case, like customer 360, which we have been talking for decades now, right? Uh, yet uh, still it's mm -hmm. a complex mm -hmm. problem. Everybody is trying to get that uh, trusted single view of their customers so that they can serve the customer needs in a uh, better way, offer uh, uh, better uh, solutions and products to the customers, yeah. get better insights about the customer behavior, whether uh, leveraging deep learning, uh, machine learning, uh, et cetera. However, in order to do that, the data has to be in a clean, trusted, uh, valid format. And every business is going global. Yeah. You have data sets coming from Asia, from Europe, from Latin America, and uh, uh, many different places in different formats and uh, it's becoming challenged. We acquired Trillium Software in December 2016 and our vision was really to bring that uh, world leader uh, enterprise grade data quality into the big data environments. So last week uh, we announced our uh, Trillium Quality for Big Data product. This product uh, brings unmatched capabilities of uh, uh, data validation, cleansing, enrichment, and uh, uh, matching, uh, fuzzy matching uh, yeah. uh, to the data lake. We are also leveraging our intelligent execution engine that we developed for data integration product, the MXH. So we are enabling the organizations to take this uh, data quality offering, whether it's in Hadoop MapReduce or Apache Spark, whichever compute framework it's going to be in the future. Well, so we are very excited about well, that. Congratulations, that you mentioned the data lake being a swamp that Dave Vellante referred to. Uh, it's interesting because how does it become a swamp if it's a silo, right? We're seeing data yeah. silos being an antithesis to governance, it challenges certainly IOT. Then you got the complication of geopolitical uh, borders. You mentioned that earlier. So you still got to integrate the data. You need data quality, which has yeah. been around for a while, but now it's more complex. 
What's specifically about the, the cleansing and the quality of the data that's more important now in the landscape now? Is it, is it those factors? Are, there, are that the drivers of, of the challenges there? And what's the opportunity for customers? How do they figure this out? Complexity is uh, because of uh, many different factors. Uh, some of it uh, from being global. Everything, uh, every business is uh, trying to have global presence and the data is originating from web, from mobile, from uh, many different uh, data sets. And if, you, if we just take a simple uh, address, these address uh, formats are different in every single country. Uh, Trillium quality for big data, we support over 150 uh, postal data from different countries and data enrichment with this uh, data. So it becomes really complex because you have to deal with different types of data from uh, different uh, countries. And uh, the matching also becomes very difficult, whether it's John Freer, Jay Freer, John Courier, you have to be All my to handles <laughs> on Twitter that nobody knows about. <laughs> All of the <laughs> handles you have. Uh, uh, every business is trying to have yeah. a, a better targeting in terms yeah. of offering uh, products and uh, understanding uh, the single and one and only John Furrier's uh, uh, as a customer, that creates a complexity. And uh, as any uh, data management and data processing challenge, the variety of data and the speed that data is uh, uh, really uh, being populated is higher than ever we have observed. Jim, hold on Jim, I want to get Jim involved in this one conversation because I want to just make sure those guys uh, can um, get, get settled in on, on, on just your microphone there. Jim, she's bringing up a good point I want you to weigh in and just to kind of add to the conversation and, and take it in the direction of where the automation's happening because if, yeah. if you look at what Tendu's saying is the complexity is going to have an opportunity in software. Machine learning, root, root level, yeah. cleanliness can be automated because Facebook and others have shown that you can apply machine learning and techniques to the volume of data. No human can get at all the nuances. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that impacting the data platforms and some of the tooling out there, in your opinion? Yeah, well, uh, m much of the, it, it, the issue, one of the core issues is where do you place the data matching and data cleansing logic or execution um, in, the, the, in this distributed infrastructure at the source, in the cloud, at the consumer level, in terms of rolling up the disparate versions of data into a common view. So, um, it, it, we're, in, by acquiring a very strong, well-established, you know, reputable brand in data uh, cleansing, uh, Trillium, uh, SyncSort has done a great service to your portfolio, to your customers. Uh, you know, the Trillium is well known for offering lots of options in terms of where to configure the logic, where to deploy it within distributed hybrid architectures. Mm -hmm. um, give us a sense for going forward the, the range of options you're going to be providing with, for customers mm -hmm. on where to place the cleansing and matching logic. Um, how you're going to support uh, SyncSort, a um, flexible workflows in terms of curation mm -hmm. of the data um, and so forth, uh, because the curation cycle for data is critically important, the stewardship. So how do you plan to address all of that going forward in your product portfolio? Tendon? Thank you for asking that question, Jim, uh, because uh, that's exactly uh, uh, the challenge that we hear from our customers, especially from uh, larger enterprise in financial services, uh, banking and uh, insurance. So our plan uh, is uh, our actually next uh, upcoming release, uh, end of the year, is uh, targeting a very flexible deployment. T flexible <coughs> deployment in the sense that you might be creating, uh, you m when you understand the data and create the business rules and uh, set what kind of uh, um, matching on the enrichment that you'll be uh, performing <coughs> on the data sets, uh, you can uh, actually have those business rules executed in the source of the data or in the data lake uh, or uh, uh, switch between uh, the source and the enterprise uh, data right. lake that you are cre creating. That flexibility is what we are targeting. That's one area. Th on the data cre creation side, uh, we see these percentages, 80% uh, of data stewards' time is spent on data pre data creation and data cleansing. And it is actually uh, really a very high percentage. Uh, from our customers, uh, we see this still being a challenge. One area that uh, we started investing is using the machine learning to understand the data uh, and using that uh, discovery of the data capabilities we currently have to 
make recommendations what those business rules can be or what kind of uh, data uh, validation and cleansing and matching might be required. So that's an area that uh, we will be uh, investing. Are you contemplating in terms of in your in incorporating your product portfolio using machine learning to drive this sort of, uh, the term I like to use is recommendation engine that, p that presents recommendations to the data stewards, human beings, about um, you know, different data schemas or different ways of matching the data or different ways of, or, or, or the, the optimal way of uh, reconciling d uh, different versions of customer data. So is there, is there going to be like a recommendation engine it's of that going sort? To be in, in, in that's line what with our your, plan currently recommendation so the users can opt to apply or not okay. or to modify them uh, right. because sometimes when you go to a, uh, far with the automation, uh, the, you still need some human intervention uh, in making these decisions because right. uh, you might be operating on a sample of data versus the full data set uh, and uh, you may actually have to infuse uh, some uh, human uh, uh, understanding and insight as well. So uh, our plan is to make as a recommendation in the first phase at least. Mm -hmm. That's what we are planning to. And uh, when we look at the portfolio of the products, and uh, our CEO Josh is actually today uh, was also in the cube uh, part of Splunk.conf. We have acquisitions happening. We have organic innovation that's happening, and uh, we really try uh, to stay focused in terms of how do we create more value from your data, and how do we uh, increase the business serviceability, whether it's with our Iron Stream product, uh, we made an announcement this week, Iron Stream transaction tracing uh, to create more visibility to application performance and more visibility to IT operations. For example, when you make a payment with your mobile, uh, you might be uh, having problem and you want to be able to trace back to the back end, which is usually a legacy mainframe environment, or whether uh, you are uh, populating the data lake and you want to keep the data in sync and fresh with the data source uh, and uh, uh, apply the change uh, uh, as a CDC, or whether you are uh, making that data from raw data set to the more consumable mm. data by creating the trusted uh, high quality data set. We are very much focused on creating more value and uh, bigger insights uh, out of the data And set. Josh will be on tomorrow, so folks watching, uh, we're going to get the business perspective. Yeah. I have some pointed questions I'm going to ask him, but I'll take one of the questions I was going to ask him, but I want to get your response from yeah. a technical perspective as CTO. Um, as SyncSort continues your journey, you keep on adding more and more things. It's been mm -hmm. quite impressive. You guys have done a great job. Thank uh, you. And we, we enjoy covering uh, the success there, watching you guys uh, really evolve. What is the value proposition for SyncSort today, technically? If you go in, talk to a customer, and prospective new customer, why SyncSort? What's the enabling value that you're providing under the hood, technically, for customers? We are enabling uh, our customers to access uh, and uh, uh, integrate data sets in a trusted ma uh, manner. So we are ultimately liberating the data from all of the enterprise uh, data stores mm -hmm. and making that data consumable in a trusted manner. And everything we provide in that data management stack uh, is about uh, making data available, make making data accessible and uh, uh, integrate with the modern data architecture, bridging the gap between those legacy environments and the modern data architecture. And it becomes really a big challenge because this is a cross-platform play. It is not a single environment that uh, enterprise is uh, working mm -hmm. with. Every Hadoop is real now, right? Yeah. Hadoop is in the center of data warehouse architecture. And uh, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, there's also yeah. a big trend about That's the cloud. certainly batch, they own the batch thing. Yeah, and uh, as part of that, it becomes very important to be able to leverage the existing uh, data uh, assets in the enterprise, and that requires an understanding of the legacy data stores and existing infrastructure and existing data warehouse uh, And you guys uh, say attributes. you provide that? We provide that, okay, and so that's our value, yeah. and we provide about that hold in a enterprise grade uh, hold manner. Hold on, Jim, one second, just sure. to finish the thought. Okay, so given that, okay, cool, you got that out there. What's the problem that you're solving for customers today? What's the big problem in the enterprise and in the data world today that you address? I want to have a single view of my data 
and whether that data is originating on the mobile or that data is originating on the main frame or in the legacy data warehouse. And we provide that single view in a trusted manner. What's, when you mentioned Iron Stream, um, that reminded me that one of the core things that we're seeing at Wikibon in terms of IT operations is increasingly being automated through AI. Some call it AI ops and whatnot. We're, we're going deeper on the research there. Iron Stream, by bringing mainframe and transactional data, and like you, the use case you, you brought in was IT operations data, uh, into um, a, a data lake alongside machine data that you might source from the Internet of Things and so forth. Seemed to me that that's a, that's a great enabler for, uh, potentially, for SyncSort if it wished to, to play your, uh, your, your solutions or position them into IT operations as an enabler, f leveraging your machine learning investments to, a, you know, to, to build more automated um, uh, like anomaly detection and remediation uh, into your capabilities. What are your thoughts? Is that where you're going, or do you see it as an opportunity, AI for IT ops, for, for sync sort going Absolutely. forward? Absolutely. We target uh, uh, use cases around IT uh, operations and yeah. application performance. We integrate with Splunk ITSI, uh, uh, and uh, we also uh, provide this data available in the big data analytics platforms. So those are really application performance and IT operations are the uh, main use cases we target. And as part of the advanced analytics platform, for example, uh, we can correlate that data set with other machine data that's originating in other platforms mm -hmm. in the enterprise. Nobody's looking at what's happening on mainframe or what's happening in uh, my uh, uh, Hadoop cluster or what's happening yeah. on my mm -hmm. VMware uh, environment, right? They want to correlate the data that's uh, cross-platform and that's one of the biggest values that's we bring, whether it's on the machine yeah. data or on the application data. Yeah, that's quite a differentiator for you. Tendu, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to see you. Uh, congratulations oh. on your success. Thanks for, for sharing. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, CUBE coverage here in Big Data NYC. Uh, exclusive coverage of our event, Big Data NYC, in conjunction with Strata Hadoop, right around the corner. This is our annual event for SiliconANGLE and the CUBE and Wikibon. I'm John Furrier, Jim Kobielis, who's our analyst at Wikibon on Big Data. Peter Burris has been on the CUBE. He's here as well. Big three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage on what's happening in the data world. This is the CUBE. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more after this short break.